In the last video, you got familiar with Figma user interface. Now I'll guide you step by step to build a color system for a SAS dashboard. As we move forward, we'll cover typography styles, a basic design system with components, auto layout, responsive design using grids, and much more. To make things easier, I've included the working file in the description, so you can follow along and apply everything in real time. Let's get started. You might be wondering, what exactly are color styles and why should you use them? To keep it short and simple, color styles are predefined color swatches that you can save and reuse across your designs. Instead of manually picking the same color every time, you apply a color style, keeping everything consistent and making updates effortless. For example, if your primary button appears on multiple screens, applying a color style ensures that all buttons stay the same shade of blue or whatever color you choose. If you ever need to tweak that color, a single update applies everywhere automatically. Setting up color styles early helps you stay consistent, your UI looks polished with the same colors applied across all screens. You work faster, instead of manually copying colors, you apply styles in one click. And you make quick updates, so if you need to tweak the brand color, change it once and Figma updates everything instantly. Even though we're designing a single dashboard, imagine working on an entire product with dozens of pages. Without color styles, managing consistency will be a nightmare. So start with the primary color. This is usually the brand color provided by your client or chosen for your project. For this tutorial, you already have a set of colors in your file to create the styles. Define neutral and semantic colors. Neutrals or grays are for backgrounds, texts and dividers, while semantic colors, reds, yellows, greens, helps communicate errors, success status and warnings. Create shades and tints. You might have seen color scales like 50 to 950. These are just variations of your base color, from lightest to darkest. To keep things simple, we'll start with just two things and two shades per color, enough to understand the fundamentals without overcomplicating it. Before we create our color palette, let's break down some key terms. So hue, this is the pure color itself, as seen on the color wheel, red, blue, yellow, green, orange, purple. Tints, when you add white to a hue, it becomes lighter, creating a soft and pastel-like version of the original color. Tints are often associated with a fresh and bright feel. Then the shade. When you add black to a hue, it gets darker while keeping the same base color. Shades are great for adding depth and contrast to a design. There are different ways to create shades and tints in Figma, and I'll show you two methods. A great way to create shades and tints is by using HSL meaning hue, saturation and lightness. So hue controls the base color. If you change this, you're selecting a different color entirely. Saturation adjusts how vivid or muted the color is. Moving it down makes color fade towards white. And lightness control. Brightness increasing it makes tints, decreasing it makes shades. Let's apply this to our color palette. This one will be our primary color, so press I to select the color picker and just pick the, this purple uh, color which will be our primary color. Then you may choose each of these squares, let's click this one and copy the same purple there using the color picker. Now click in the fill color and change X to HSL. So to your left side you have bright colors and to the right side dark colors. Here in the L that stands for lightness, let's add some light to the color. If you select this value and hit shift plus the app arrow key, it will add increments of 10. But if you want smaller increments, you can just click up one by one. Now let's do the same for the other one. Copy this color and let's add more light to it. Next, do the same for shadows. Copy the main primary color and click Shift plus down arrow key and reduce the light. Then, do the same for the other one. And you've just settled the primary color that will be used in buttons, for example. 
Now let's set up neutral colors. And these could be essentially for backgrounds, typography and some UI elements. So here it will be pure white. Just click here. Then for the black one, I'll copy this one and make it black. Now to create a dark gray, you may apply the same principle. Copy the black color and then click in the fill color and it in the HSL menu, add some lightness to it. Let's do the same for gray. And the same for light gray. So you can play around with the grayscale you want for your project. So far you have seen the manual way to create shades and tints. But if you want to speed things up, there are great tools online that do the work for you. Tint.dev, this tool automatically generates a full color scale based on any color you input. Here's how you can use it. Enter your base color in Tint.dev, I will use this purple one, and now copy the X codes from the generated palette. Paste it, this into Figma or load them uh, using a JSON file. If you prefer, you can also skin, screenshot the palette and use the color picker to add colors to your file. But keep in mind that the screenshots might slightly alter the original color, so double check the values. If you've never heard of semantic colors, they play a crucial role in design by visually communicating meaning. Certain colors naturally trigger emotional, cultural or psychological responses, which is why they are widely used in user interface design to indicate different states or actions. Here's how they're typically used. Success with green, use it to show success, completion or positive outcomes. Green is associated with growth, harmony and progress, making it perfect choice for completed actions. Warning usually is yellow. It grabs attention and signals potential issues. Yellow represents caution, alertness and the need to proceed carefully, making it effective for warnings and alerts. Then errors. By using red, it indicates errors or critical issues. Red is linked to danger, urgency and stopping, making it ideal for highlighting mistakes that require immediate action. And then you have blue for information. Use it to provide guidance or helpful information. Blue symbolizes trust, reliability and communication which is why it's commonly seen in informational messages. Now that you understand semantic colors, do you remember the last time you saw them in an app or website? Tell me in the comments if you remember. These colors are not just for aesthetics. They guide users and make interfaces more intuitive. The technique to create styles for semantic colors is the same as you have done for primary and neutral colors. So I'll fast forward this part to move to the next topic that is rename our layers and associate styles and groups. You may see that you have this legend below our colors with these numbers. And if you look at the layers panel here on the left hand side, they are already grouped and named with the correspondent number. But that's just it, they are not styles yet. And it's a bit messy because we have repeated numbers in the layers panel that we don't know what which corresponds to which color. So let's start with the primary color. You may select everything, and then you press Command or Control plus R and you can now rename your layers. Since these will be from our primary group, you type primary slash and this slash means that you will have kind of a folder called primary and the subfolder will be the values 50, 250 and so on. And this will be especially cool when you create variables that it will know that these values belong inside the primary color. And then you click here current name and it will appear this dollar and ampersand sign. Then let's, let's fast forward to do the same on the neutral and semantic colors.
Okay, now everything is named appropriately. So next, let's create our styles. You can go color by color and go to fill here and then style and create a style and it will take so many time. I think right now there isn't an automatic way to do this natively in Figma. If so, let me know in the comments so we will need the help of some plugins. And the plugin you can use is called Styler. So click here in Actions and type Styler. It's a free plugin and you can extract styles, generate styles, apply, detach or remove styles. In this case, you want to generate styles. And for that, you need to select all your shapes that have colors and go to Styler and click Generate Styles. When it finishes, it informs you how many styles were created. So now if you click on your canvas and look on the right hand side and you now have your local styles created and organize it inside each folder. If you add a new shape, you can click on Styles and you got all your styles here and you can switch between list view or grid view if you want to display in a different way and then just click the color you want. That will be applied to your shape. And then you can change it well, how many times you want. So next step is to create all of your styles into variables. So if you open styles to variables you, and if you don't have it, just search here in the actions icon and type styles to variables and hit run. It's going to open this pop-up that will inform you that all the styles that's detected and you can rename your collection, let's call it color palette. Then click over styles into variables and you should get this message here at the bottom that says how many color variables were created. Now click on your canvas and go up here to your local variables. Click here and there you have it. All your color variables created and also nested in their folders. Now that you check if everything went well, you may click back on your canvas and select all your local styles and just delete them because now you have variables. So if you click again in your local variables, you notice that they are still there. In the next video, you will use these color variables to create color tokens, the next level in your project, especially when you are working with design systems. Until then, watch my Figma playlist to explore concepts like components and variants that you will use multiple times during work. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in my next video, and have a great day!